What's up guys, Erroneous here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. I want to give you some tips and tricks on how to beat Amius, the boss, in Cursed City. So behind me I do have a video pre-recorded of me beating the current Amius boss rotation. So I want to go over what you should be looking out for when you're fighting the boss and how you can actually fight the boss because he's a little bit challenging in terms of when he's swapping forms and what you should look out for in terms of your gear presets or your masteries and making sure you're, you have the do's and don'ts for specific champions. And then I'm going to go over the champions that I utilize at the end of the video. I'm not going to go through the entire walkthrough of the Amius boss when I do this because it took me about 20 minutes to beat him just because I made mistakes along the way. But I want to make sure that if you're having struggles with him, how can you go past those mistakes? And, and, and if you do make any mistakes, can you still survive throughout the entirety of the fight? And how do you come back from that? So I will be going over that in this video. So without further ado, let's do this. Let's watch this video here that we've got going on for Amias. I'm going to move myself out of the way here on the opposite side. As you can see, I'm just kind of looking at Amias boss. Here's the team I'm utilizing. I personally put Mother Sabel with the 24% speed aura in the lead. It gives a, you want to be fast here. You want to be over 230 speed if possible with all your champions. You really have to be as fast as possible so you can get back around to like heal reductions, for example, you know, things that you want. You want heal reduction on the boss. You want decreased attack on the boss. You, it's best if you have an increased defense or a strengthen on yourself, on your own team or even potentially putting a veil or perfect veil on your entire team because when the boss transforms he can't actually remove the perfect veil or the veil he can only remove and exchange replace the increased defense with decreased defense on your team the strengthen to weaken so on and so forth so it's better to have a strengthen on your team than it is to actually have a de increased defense because the strengthen converts to weaken which uh, allows you to take less damage as compared to the decreased defense swap. Um, bringing in Newt is definitely detrimental, uh, not detrimental to you, but it's detrimental to the boss because of the uh, the max HP ability that he has. And then you have Pytheon who helps with healing. Another reason why you want to bring in a Pytheon or other champion that could potentially bring in heals or bring in a block debuff buff on the entire team for the Amius boss when he's in the first form he can stun the entire team however you can resist the stun if you have enough resistance so you need to have at least like 600 plus resistance to in order to resist the stun and it's very difficult to do that and have really fast speeds so I don't think everybody can do it you can and I'll show you what you can do of course under priest Brogni having two block debuff buff champions is great under Priest Brogni doesn't have enough accuracy to land HP burn on his A1 or uh, remove the buffs from the boss because he's built in a damage build for my account. But you could build him in any way you feel appropriate as long as he's built somewhat fast around 220 to 230 speed. Keep in mind, you do also have the area bonuses that you can get, which I will showcase to you really quickly. So if you are farming live arena, you can get area bonuses to help you with your speed if you're struggling in the speed department. And then, of course, you can work on other things, too. Personally, I'm focusing mainly on speed for Curse City, and I'm going to be focusing on accuracy and crit damage and ignore defense first. So those are the four primary things I would focus on in area bonuses, especially for the Amias boss as well. Another thing you can focus specifically for uh, the area bonuses for Amias, if you're having struggles surviving, would be HP on here so you want to go for the HP percentage boost up to 20% if possible if you're just struggling with surviving because you don't have awakenings the higher awakenings you have on your champions the less damage you take from the Amius boss so keep that in mind so let's get going here I'm gonna go ahead and go through and I'll get I'll get the start here See if we can speed this up alright so first things first I start off with the a ones and keep in mind the boss has three abilities here he has the basic A1 right here, the green ability. Then he has the A2. The green ability just does straight damage and heals himself based on damage dealt. The A2 ends up doing a big heal on himself, so you got to be careful. And the A3 
can convert the debuffs that you place on him into buffs depending on the type of debuffs that you're placing on him so be very very careful you can manipulate this throughout the course of the battle it's just a little bit challenging at first trying to remember and recall so month to month of course the rotation changes for amius and sometimes he does things a little bit finicky but uh you have to sort of play for a few minutes and as he swaps forms and swaps back you can start to understand what he's trying to do and you can change the way your direction is going for certain buffs or debuffs to ensure that if you don't if you place a decreased defense or a decreased attack you don't want him putting on increased attack on himself or increased defense because it makes him harder to kill and then he's going to hit way harder especially if he's about to transform as well um, but it does make his a1 ability hit really hard on your champions so if you don't have very tanky champions you will get crushed uh, if he ends up converting those debuffs into buffs. So let's go ahead into this. I'm probably going to go over the first four to six minutes. I'm not going to do the entire battle, but essentially my goal is to use the Blessed Bash as much as possible to have big chunks come out of his HP for the max HP. I'm using the A1s for now. I'm saving my abilities. So I almost died from the A1. He doesn't even have any buffs on. No buffs whatsoever. That's how strong he is. So I heal up, and now I put the block debuff buff because he's about to do the stun. So one thing you can notice with this avatar on the A3 is that it looks like the person's dazed and confused. If you see a dazed and confused avatar, 99% of the time, that means they're going to be putting some type of CC, which is just a crowd control debuff, on you or on the attacker. So um, yeah, so you got to be careful with that. So right here, he tries to put the stuns on everybody. We weren't able to land the stuns because of the fact that we have the block debuff buff. And then we can go ahead and put the heal reduction. So you want to make sure you do the heal reduction after he does the A3. If you do the heal reduction before, he will convert the heal reduction into a continuous heal, which means he's just going to keep on healing up over and over. And the reason why this battle took me 20 minutes is because I was making those mistakes where I wasn't putting the heal reduction at the right times and you know i wasn't landing brimstone of course brimstone is another really really strong uh, blessing that you can bring in on any champion i have my brimstone on my mother sabelle as well as my newt so brimstone does do a lot of damage to the boss it's a good way to cheese the boss but most of the damage is coming from newt's a3 which you also want to keep in mind not to do resets or use refresh gear or refresh accessories like reflex or just refresh accessories in general because when you do that it actually lowers the counter on this passive so you can see this passive where the moon is and if this pat this usually starts off at around three or four when he's in this form and then if you do a reset on anybody's abilities so for example Ancora comes in she can reset with the a1 potentially with a percentage chance if she resets one of your allies this counter then ticks down one before he takes a turn. So it's gonna tick down one from a reset of your ability from a mastery or from another champion resetting like a Kaimar or something. So you gotta be very, very careful with this counter. If it goes down too quickly because of your champions refreshing from the reflex set or refresh gear, he's just gonna keep swapping over to his secondary form which is his even harder hitting form. And you just gotta be very, very careful with that. So I would recommend not having any masteries that can refresh your abilities and I'll go over those masteries later on to watch out for. So let's keep going here. As you can see, I'm kind of uh, hacking away at him slowly but surely. I'm looking at my abilities. Uh, both of them are damaged. His A2 for Under Priest Brogni can remove a debuff from the target and also removes a debuff from us. So removes a buff from the target he's attacking, removes a debuff from our allies one debuff which is definitely very very good for the amius boss so one thing you want to keep in mind as well before the boss goes into his next form you can see you got to keep in mind the counter here right now it's on a one counter make sure you put a decrease attack before it goes into the second form if you have a decrease attack before it goes into the second form which is a two turn of course you can extend that with master hexer to do a three turn decrease attack that's going to be extremely, extremely powerful for when he swaps forms and allows your champions to potentially survive an extra turn or two. So keep that in mind when you're going into, when he's going into his second form. 
So as you can see, I'm just kind of um, healing up here. Pytheon is extremely strong in this, uh, this, uh, this spot here because he revives as well. Mother Sabelle is strong as well because she can do the, the revive on death. So that is very strong too. However, this guy can remove the revive on death with the A2. So, you know, and then he kills you. Um, and then the other thing is, if you have an increased defense and a revive on death, he's going to take that increased defense and turn it into a decreased defense before attacking, which will then wipe out your whole team. And I made that mistake a few times. Luckily, my Pytheon has enough resistance where he's resisting the strip and he... he he can't resist. Nobody can resist the sleep, though. So you got to be careful with that. Mythical champions, of course, I'm not showcasing any mythicals here. Mythical champions are pretty strong against Amius. However, whenever Amius changes form, it forces your mythical champion to change forms as well. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to get into the details about the mythicals, though, just because most people just don't have them. So right now, he's on a two-turn. And you, you see... With this passive on the second form, you can't actually see a counter for the passive on the second form. So his A1, A2, and A3 is what you're going to be looking at. Once this A2 goes to, to one turn, he's going to then swap over to the other form when he gets another turn. So, And when he swaps over to the other form, he's going to heal. So it's really important that you put a heal reduction... So what I should have done was put a heal reduction, but I fell asleep because of I wasn't fast enough with my champion here. So Venomage wasn't fast enough, which means we weren't able to put the heal reduction, which means he literally just healed all the way back up almost to full, literally past 75% of his health. So if my Venomage was faster, if she was like 260, 270 speed, we'd be able to lap him and then put the heal reduction before he swaps over. And he ends up typically going in with the A2 over the A3 most of the time, which the A2 is the one that gives him the big heal. The A3 stuns you, okay, and then converts all the debuffs that you put on him into a buff on himself. So just be mindful of that. So those are all the main things you kind of want to look out for for this boss. But again, Brimstone is extremely important. Again, I didn't use the heal reduction because if he, if I put heal reduction, he'll put continuous heals, which just extends and prolongs the battle even more and more. So I, I think I get to around like four minutes or so. That's where you want to try to cleanse or already have the block debuff buff up with Under Priest or with Pytheon. So I made a mistake there too. Um, so just keep in mind, there's a lot of mistakes that I made during this fight. But of course, I didn't beat the last Amius rotation. So it's been like a month and a half, two months since I fought Amius again. And so I was a little rusty during this fight. But like I said, you kind of want to continuously pound away at this guy. He transforms, he removes, he sleeps everybody. And then see how he just removed those two buffs. The revive on death got removed here, got removed here, and got removed from Venomage. And then he's going to come in with the big slam and he's going to kill somebody. So he did put the incre decreased defense on us too. So it converted the increased defense to a decreased defense. And that's what caused the uh, Mother Sabelle to die. Luckily, nobody else died, but they could have died. And it does happen throughout the video. I'm just not going to go through again. I'm not going to go through the whole fight. So luckily, we can cleanse with our Pytheon. You can bring in another cleanser. Just keep in mind... Don't bring in a cleanser that's going to continuously, like Ancora is one of the worst matchups for Amius, but she you can make her work. It's just that she's going to continuously reset on the A1. You kind of don't want to get lucky on resetting an ally's ability because if you keep resetting the ally, he's going to keep swapping forms and just annihilate you because he hits really hard on this form. So as you can see, he's about to hit really hard on one enemy or one ally. Boom, one shot. And he hits twice with that ability. But the good thing is, he transforms back again. I can do the AoE, and we just keep on going. The issue is, I did not put the heal reduction again. So I didn't put the heal reduction before he swaps into this form. And that's why he keeps healing up to full. But if I did do that, he would have probably been dead within three to four minutes. But as you can see, I think I go to like four minutes or so, and I get close to killing him. Let's see, right here, around five minutes or so. I get close to killing him, but he has a continuous heal because he, I put a heal reduction on him. Again, you can't do that. You don't want to do that. 
It's not that you can't do it, you just don't want to do it because the heal reduction is going to just heal them back up a, a huge chunk of heal healing every single time. So just be very mindful. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. I ended up doing that whole thing the entire time. We go through, we end up winning, and then I go through the gear here. Okay, so we've got Mother Sabel with 2 million just because of the brimstone. Uh, Newt with 13 million. Again, the enemy max HP does the most damage to this boss. Also, Rathalos does incredible damage to this boss. If you have an HP burn, he can hit millions of damage on the boss uh, during specific rotations. Under Priest Brogni, extremely good for the shields, uh, helping survive and helping weaken the boss with this specific blessing for cruelty. Venomage, very good for the heal reduction. And uh, she's just really for the heal reduction, to be honest. She doesn't bring too much to the table. She does do the poison explosion on the A1. But that's really the only damage she can do. It's not that great. It'll take forever to beat the boss with just poisons. And then Pythion's just there to revive your champions, um, soak up hits, cleanse, and make sure we don't get stunned on our team. Okay, so he doesn't get hit the entire time because he has the most HP on the team. And because he's just, he's built different. Okay, he's built different. The, the Amius boss did not target Pythion a single time because he has the most HP, the most defense on the team. Um, so keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and I'll show you the gear on here as well. So I go through, I got nice, uh, gloves here with supersonic with the speed. Hopefully we can roll well. We got another one with speed for the mythical. This one was with res with HP percent, no speed res. This one's trash, uh, crit damage, speed accuracy on supersonic, which is not what I want, but we'll take it speed again for mythical. So we're getting a lot of speed mythicals which is nice for the substats. And then this ring, not the best, but it, we can obviously reroll these things too. Uh, crit damage, this one's decent as well. So we did get a, a remnant shard there. So let me go ahead and showcase to you other items here. So I'm gonna showcase to you the champions I use now. So we've got Under Priest. He's built in damage for me. You don't have to build him this way. You can of course build him any way you please, just to make sure you have a decent survivability, over 220 speed. Of course, keep in mind, Curse City, I have an additional plus 10 speed, so he's over 230 speed. And he has 328 accuracy, which is not enough to land debuffs on the boss, of like the HP burn he has on his A1 ability here. But I never landed it a single time. But I did get a 3% on removing a buff from the boss one time. But again, you don't want to rely on that. He doesn't necessarily need to remove the buffs, but it is helpful if he does have the accuracy to do so. And the accuracy would need to be around 450 accuracy to do that. And then Helm Smasher is what I put on him. Here's the masteries for defense. I went down the defense tree and offense tree. And he's meant to do damage. So decent champion. Again, the stats are here. 222 without the area bonus. 251 crit damage. 3500 on the attack. 312 accuracy. Moving on to Newt. This is the same build I've had for a long time. 234 on the speed, 288 crit damage, 5200 on the defense, 442 accuracy. That's enough accuracy to land the brimstone as because it's only a four star and you need accuracy for brimstone on anything less than a six star. We can land the Beaker's Attack, the Weaken, and we can land... Yeah, that's pretty much all we can land because he can't drop turn meter on the boss. And then the brimstone can land as well. So with him, I put a crit damage flawless ex execution. For additional crit damage, I went with Master Hexer to potentially extend the increase a, or decrease attack and weaken. He is fully booked, so is Under Priest. And does he have to be, does Under Priest have to be fully booked? No, but it's recommended that you do have him fully booked, so it makes it a lot easier. Uh, you definitely need Pythion fully booked because if you don't, it's going to be extremely hard and challenging because you won't be able to get the block debuffs up as much as you can as, or as you should. And then the revive will be way too long on a seven turn cooldown, which will end up killing you potentially over time if you don't have crazy gear stats. So he is in a stone skin arena build right now. I'm eventually going to change this into bolster and stone skin, but he is in a arena one turn stone skin build 82,000 HP, 3,200 defense, 266 speed, 654 on the resistance. That's why his HP and defense isn't that high and his speed's not that high because of the resistance being over 650. So Masteries, I did put him in the Defense Tree and Support Tree. Move myself out of the way here. 
you can see that really quickly. I went with the unshakable for extra resistance. And I do utilize him a lot in arena and live arena. And then we've got uh, Mother Sabelle. She has full masteries. She has just War Master at the end here. And then counterattack, so we can hopefully land Brimstone more often. I do utilize her also in Iron Twins. She's very strong there. And I used to utilize her in Hydra as well. She's also very strong in Hydra because of the decreased speed on the A1. And you can put her in a Hex set and she becomes pretty nuts. Plus she has the Revive on Death, Increased Defense, and the nice block damage and healing. And when she dies and revives, she can heal the allies as well. So she is very, very strong for most PvE areas in the game. Especially for the Knight's Revenant faction, she's extremely powerful there. I went for this fusion and then I pulled a duplicate of her. So there's the roll, uh, masteries. Here is the books. I did fully book her as well. And she's just in perception set. So she has enough accuracy to land 579, which is actually overkill. Uh, I think that the Iron Twins required 550 accuracy at one point. And, but they recently uh, neutered the Iron Twins and Sand Devils, so you only need like 450 accuracy now, so it's a lot easier for stage 15. So I can re-gear her at some point and put the gear from her onto other champions that I would prefer to use it on. For Venomage, she is a 5-star Awakening. Again, keep in mind, the higher Awakenings you have, the less damage you take from the boss. Uh, you can check the, the boss's guide. There's like a location you can actually just look it up and see how much damage mitigation you will have. When you have awakenings so 246 speed on her again keep in mind curse city if you do the area bonus you will get additional stats uh, she has 547 accuracy she doesn't need that much she only needs 450 so this is a bit overkill but it's better than nothing and then i just have her in random pieces so i have her literally in resilience set i have her in accuracy set for for perception and then i have her in one speed set and then just random, like this is a five star old banner that has accuracy with speed and defense and HP. So nothing crazy, to be honest. Uh, eventually I'll get better accuracy banners for the lizard men as well. So yeah, so one thing I wanted to note too is the mastery you don't want to choose is Cycle of Magic. Don't choose this because if you decrease the, the cooldown of a random skill, then he will drop his four to three turn and swap forms quicker. And that means you're going to get annihilated in the second form. You also don't want Cycle of Violence. Again, it decreases the cooldown of a skill, which causes you to potentially die. So I think that's it for tips and tricks for beating this rotation boss. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Did you beat him? Are you even going for him? Do you not care about Curse City? Do you just not care about that game mode in general? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If this helps you out, please consider leaving a thumbs up on the video. Give me a like. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you on a video soon. Take care.